Hi guys and welcome to the next episode. Today we're going to talk about jogging the robot and maybe we have time a little bit about uh, robot frames. If not, we're going to put that in the next video. However, before we start, I want to remind you that there is a video about uh, robot safety which I recommend to watch before we continue. Uh, there are some true stories over there that happened to me and what you should not do with the robots. I, hi I hi highly recommend it. So right here there is a link to it. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to talk about jogging the robot today. If we have time, we're going to talk a little bit about robot frames. But uh, you will ask me why? Because all of the courses uh, that you will uh, find at Fanuc, KUKA, ABB and so on, everybody will start with the uh, coordinate systems first, explaining the Cartesian coordinate systems, uh, what is uh, different between jogging in a jog mode, in a Cartesian mode, but my personal opinion, it's guys like you buy a car, you're not going to take a look at the manual first, you want to test it out, right? They all work the same, doesn't matter if it's a Ford, Audi, Volkswagen. It's the same car, it has the steering wheel, it has the gears, it has the gas, brake, maybe the clutch as well. If you have manual transmission and that's all you need to know, right? You get inside the car, you test it out. If you want to know more about it, then you read it. It depends how you like it. Uh, so that's my, my way. We're going to discuss how to move the robot first. And then I'm going to tell you uh, how to move it correctly or how you should move it. So let's take a look in here. What's the device that we use uh, to tell the robot what to do? For example, uh, if you have a laptop, you have your mouse and the keyboard to input the information. In the robot, we're using something called teach pendants. What are those? That's a HMI bit device. So it's a human machine interface used to communicate between you as a user and the robot. So each robot has a different teach pendant. They look different, but they work the same. Again, like in a car, doesn't matter the brand, you will always have the same features in it. So uh, let's start with the easiest one. Let's start with the ABB. Well, easiest. Let's say it has it looks the easiest, the pretty easy to operate maybe for you. So what you can see on the teach pendant, each of them has the same features. First of, the, of them is the screen. That's where you will see all of the information and that's where you're going to write your programs. That's where you're going to troubleshoot. Second thing is the e-stop button. That's the button used to stop the robots. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. And you have something to use to jog, to, to jog the robots or move the robots. The moving the robot is called jogging the robots. So that's the phrase that we use for moving the robot. So in this case, we have a joystick to move it. It's like, uh, I don't know if you guys ever used PlayStation. It has like these two little knobs. It's exactly the same thing. It's an analog joystick. And when you move it, the robot is going to move. So I'm going to show it to you how it works later on. Okay. Now in the back of the teach pendant, you have something uh, called the deadman switch. Yep, deadman switch or enabling device. There are two names for it. What is it for? Uh, imagine you are in a Tesla car and they have this feature that they are going to drive alone for some time, but you gotta keep your hands on the wheel. It's the same thing. You need to hold it in a specific position and then you're able to move the robot. Smart thing, huh? So there are three positions of this deadman switch. Uh, there is no specific naming really for them. I created my own. So the first one is the rest position. That's uh, how it will operate when you put the teach pendant on the, on the cabinet or on the desk. There is a working position and that's the position when the robot will be able to move. Actually, you will be able to move the robot when you are in a teach mode. 
And there is the third position, uh, which I call the panic mode. And that's when you squeeze it too hard. So what is it for, guys? Uh, imagine you're jogging the robot and you get scared of something because the robot is going to hit something or uh, somebody is walking by and he is not seeing the robot moving. So the human reactions are, are natural sometimes. There are usually two things you're going to do. Well, except for screaming if something is going to happen, of course. Uh, first of them is either you're going to open your hands and you're going to stop the robot by this, uh, by this, by doing that, because you are holding the deadman switch in a working position, uh, and then you release it, so the robot will stop. Again, like in a Tesla car, you when you stop holding the wheel because you're falling asleep, the car is going to beep, and later on it's going to stop. In here, uh, of course, in the car it will take some time. In here, it works immediately, like and done. The robot is stopped. The brakes engaged. It's like putting a handbrake in your car. Just the wheels are going to lock. Or the second reaction is going to be squeeze. And you're going to squeeze the teach pendant and the deadman switch is going to trigger to the first position, the panic position, and the robot is going to stop as well. That will trigger the brakes on each of the robot axes. So that's something to keep you safe while you're operating the robot. When the robot is in auto mode, that switch is not doing anything. So that's just when you have the control of the robot and that's the safe, safe way to uh, stop the robot. Maybe not safe, but that's the safety for you, that you won't get hurt by robot. Or, uh, like I said in a previous movie regarding the safety, uh, if you haven't seen it, take a look in here, it's really good. It has some true stories that I'm telling that happened to me or to people I know and I've been a witness of them. Uh, there is a short movie showing the robot hitting someone. What's going to happen when the robot will hit you? I don't know, from the back, because we didn't see it. You're going to either drop the tissue pendant, so you're going to release the dead man and that will stop the robot, or if there is like electric shock, you step on something, then you're going to squeeze it. That's the natural re reaction of your muscles. So that's the dead man. And each of robot teach pendants, doesn't matter what brand, will have it. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the second one. The second one is uh, KUKA's teach pendant. So we see more keys in here, right? Again, the purpose is going to be the same. You will have your e-stop, you're going to have your screen where you're going to see the communication between you and the robot, your programs and all of that stuff we're going to talk about later. And you have your job keys. In here, this teach pendant has two ways of jogging. One of them is the 6D mouse that you can see a little bit on the top. And the second one are the classic keys with plus and minus used to jog the robot. And on the back, yep, we have the dead man. In here we have it on both sides because you might be right-handed or left-handed. I didn't mention in the ABB there is the option of rotating the screen 180 degrees so you can put it on your left hand or you can put it on your right hand. Don't worry about it. Okay, now let's take a look at the last one, the Fanuk one. In the Fanuk, what do we have? Even more keys. Right, don't freak out. And again, the purpose, the features are the same. You have your e-stop, you have your screen, you have your jog keys, and in the back, you have your deadman switch. Pretty simple. Like I said, guys, with the robots, it's like with a car. The brand doesn't matter. They will work the same. Yes, of course, you program them different. They have different features. They behave different and so on and so on. But that's not what we're talking about today. So now you're going to ask, OK, I know how the teach pendant looks. What about jogging? OK, so let's get to jogging. Okay, guys, let's get to jogging. How do we jog the robots? Uh, first of all, we need to turn on the robot cabinet if they are not on. So just turn the switch, the main switch, doesn't matter if you have the KUKA, the ABB or FANUK, the same thing, just turn the key. Uh, I'm sorry, turn the switch and let them boot up. It will take some time. Uh, you will see that the screen is going to show you some information 
boot up, just wait. And once it's done, once it's, bo once it's boot up, you're going to see uh, on the screen some faults, probably, maybe, maybe not. So what I always do, the first thing, I'm going to reset those faults. So just hit the reset button. Uh, in the fanuc it's located on the teach pendant as a hard key. So just push it and that's going to reset the faults. On the KUKA, there is a, a touch on the touch screen, there is a button, confirm. You click it and in the ABB, if there are any faults, most likely it's going to appear on your screen and there is a small button, acknowledge. If not, you will see uh, at your notification bar at the top, the explanation mark with the red error, then you get a click on it, then the error will pop up and you, you can acknowledge. That's what I do always when I get to the robot. First thing, reset the faults. It might not reset all of the faults because maybe something happened, but it's a good habit. Okay, uh, then check if the robot is in teach mode. So that's the mode where you can operate the robot. There are usually three modes in a robot. Automatic mode, T1 mode and T2 or full speed. So make sure to turn the key if you are on FANUC or on ABB to the teach mode or T1. In KUKA, you gotta change the switch on the robot, on the teach pendant. Switch it and we're ready to go. Okay, now you're going to hold the deadman switch and push it slightly. When you hear the click, that's when the deadman is in a working position. That's where robot is enabled. And what you gotta do now, in FANUC, you need to reset the faults again. Because that's the method if you do it for the first time, it might clear some old faults, but you will always have the fault deadman switch not enabled. You click on it, you click, I'm sorry, you click on the reset button and that's going to get rid of the fault. There will be no fault at the top and you will hear uh, like a click on the robot. And that means that the robot is enabled, the drives are enabled, that the, you're able to move the robot. Let's go to the next pendant. Now we have the KUKAs. On the KUKA, what do you need to do? Well, after you change it to T1 or work mode, again, take the teach pendant, push your deadman switch to a working position, confirm all of the faults if there are any, there you go, ready to go. And the last one, ABB, the same thing. Hold your deadman switch, if there are any faults at the top screen, acknowledge the faults, and that's it, the robot is ready to go. How do we jog the robot? Pretty simple. Do you remember how I told you about the jog keys? Just move it. With the ABB, just move the joystick, see if the robot is moving. If it's moving, great. If it's not moving, maybe there are some faults. Always check the faults. KUKA, push the buttons or move the mouse. If the robot is moving, great, you're able to move the robot. In the FANUC, uh, you need to, something I forgot about, uh, there is a switch at the top, which is actually turning on or off the teach pendant. So you gotta turn it on before pushing the deadman switch. So sorry guys. So first thing, change your switch to teach mode on, hold the deadman, hit the reset, you will see no faults, and now you can jog the robot. To jog the robot, you need to hold the shift key. Why? The shift key is blue and all of the keys are blue. So hold the shift key and try to hit the button, see what the robot is doing. That's it guys, you're able to move the robot. So have fun with it, wait for the next movie and see you over there. I'm going to tell you which way to jog the robot and what are the options that you have for jogging. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button if you like it, leave a comment so I know what you want to know more, and guys, have fun, see you in the next movie, bye bye!